Today I'm going to show you three different painting techniques for your clay projects. You can use these on anything that you make, a pinch pot, a sculpture, a lantern, um, any other sculptures you could create, um, and your nativity scene, people, animals. So the first technique is called a masking technique, and I already went ahead and put some painter's tape um, on my slab of clay and this is just a sample piece and I decided to rip my clay because I like the uneven ripped edges and then I placed the tape down along my clay and I'm going to go ahead and now put some paint in these areas. So I've decided that I'm going to use um, a little bit of blue light blue, maybe white and dark blue. And I have a piece of paper right here with me so that I can actually um, decide how, how wet or dark, or how wet or dry I want the, the paint to be when I apply it. And I'm just gonna do um, what's called a monochromatic scheme, color scheme. So I'm applying some blue medium blue, a light blue, and some white. And I'm doing um, a dry brush technique. Most of my um, three brushes that I have here are dry. I do have a cup of water, clean water that I can use if the paint gets a little too thick. And I have a water cup for dirty brushes. So I'm just gonna paint in all of these areas right now that I can see between the tape marks. The reason you don't want really wet paint is because the wet paint can actually leak underneath the tape. You can actually use a sponge for this if you like I would use an old kitchen sponge. Um, you don't want to use your clay sponge because then the acrylic paint could stay in that permanently if you don't wash it out right away and you don't want the paint to get into the clay. So, And then what we'll do is we'll let this air dry for a while. I would say at least a half hour. Make sure it's completely dry before you peel the paint off or the tape off so that the paint doesn't come with it. So that's the first technique. It's masking. We'll check that out in a little bit. The next technique um, I'm going to show you is, I'm gonna show you a sponging technique. And I have um, actually an old kitchen sponge that I cut up and I have two different textures, a tighter sponge texture and a, and a, um, a wider sponge area. So I'm gonna take these and I decide I'm gonna do the browns. And I try, I always try this on a piece of paper ahead of time so that I make sure I end up, don't end up with um, a lot of paint so that it looks like drops, because I do want this textured look. And I'm gonna do a layering, some layering with this sponging. I have kind of a first layer down and I put the darker layer on the bottom. And then I'm going to use this umber color, this brown, put that on top. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually use, I have a drier sponge and a cleaner sponge. So I can get some um, more texture going here. 
And I could even take more colors and layer this, but you get the idea. I'm not putting a solid coat or a brush. I'm not brushing it on. There's many other ways to get paint onto a surface, onto the clay surface. Okay, so the last technique I'm going to show you here is a gradient technique. And I keep paper towels nearby so I can help dab colors off my brushes and clean my fingers in between colors. So I'm gonna use three brushes and I'm gonna use a red, orange, and yellow. I'm gonna do this gradient um, technique or gradient design. Um, some of you might call it an ombre, but I'm gonna start with, um, actually I'm gonna start with my lightest color and then go to the medium hue and then red. And I want three different colors so that I do not mix, each brush will have its own color. And I'm gonna make sure that um, I start with them pretty dry. Um, so you wanna go um, put colors together in a light to dark fashion, or you could use monochromatic, one color with white and black. You could use analogous colors like these, red, orange, yellow, that are next to each other on the color wheel. Or maybe, um, you know, a blue uh, turquoise and a green would work. So I'm gonna get a lot of paint on my brush and I'm gonna go across here and make a pretty um, big area. I'm gonna make sure I really cover this well. And the trick is to start to blend the colors in the center before they dry. So then I'm gonna put my yellow brush down, put it here, and I'm gonna go and get my orange brush and paint in the middle here. And I'm gonna start to cross over a little bit. So the paint is drying very quickly and it's going right into the clay. The clay is absorbing all the moisture in the paint. And I can use a little bit of water to um, help them stay wetter for this process. So I wanna come over the yellow just a little bit. And then I can go back with my yellow brush and maybe add in some more so that I start to blend and see the mixture of the yellow and the orange, which makes a yellow orange, which is a tertiary color or an intermediate color. And if I bring in more water, you can see how it's blending a little better. The hardest part is on the, is at the junctions between the colors because you have to be really careful not to totally mix a new color, but to have them do that gradation or the gradient, the transfer of one to the next. So there we go. We've got it going pretty well here. So then what I'm going to do is add in the red next. I'm going to go ahead and use my wider brush. So I'm going to clean this brush. And I'm going to take the red. And I'll start from the outside of this piece. And then I'm going to start to cross over into the orange a little bit. So you get that red orange color. And that's pretty much how you do a gradient. You can always go in and, and add more color if you feel like you want more of a transition between some of the colors. But don't forget not, you know, you wanna leave the each color, you wanna see each color that you used at some point. You wanna make the transition be, be subtle if possible. I think I'm gonna try this transition more, more. 
um, gradient it looks really nice on um, clay pieces. Um, it's really fun to do. So those are the three techniques, uh, masking and sponge and gradient.